So over the last couple days, I made a video, edited it, put it up, put it, put it up, and decided not to make it public. Why? It was great for me because it was very useful for testing and diagnoses, but it ended up being really boring once I actually watched it. I'm gonna surmise it for you in about a minute here. Long story short, the your network connection is to slow message came back all of a sudden on the NVIDIA Shield for no reason. Absolutely nothing changed on my end. However, the Plex app got an update pushed down. <sighs> Turns out it's a long running problem going back years that comes and goes with different versions. And real long story short, Plex is blaming NVIDIA, NVIDIA blames Plex, and bottom line is if you get a bad combination of software versions and what you're trying to do with it, can't do it. So I'm going back to Ethernet. Let me briefly show you what happens. So we'll go into Plex, which, you know what? Looks great, works great. I actually like the current version. It looks basically like the Apple TV, and there's a very good reason they did that. It works as far as, wow, okay, this is actually different than freaking yesterday. You gotta be kidding, did another one come through? Where's my, I'm missing a whole bunch of crap. There was, you know, recently played, last put in. Uh, well, this is interesting. That is my home screen. Stand by. Okay, anyway, I'll figure that out later. Here's a clip from Wonder Woman, and you can see that you get just a few seconds in. I'm on Wi-Fi right now, and all of a sudden we're getting this. Now if I pull up more info, we are direct play. I do not transcode anything. Everything is direct play, and you know it should just be streaming everything. My network speed is testing well over 100 megabits a second. This is a particularly high bitrate file, uh, mid-80s. So, I mean, it's up there, but it's not anywhere near the stress level of my network. And this is the only thing going on on the network right now. Wife isn't even home. So, uh, let me see. You can see that it is playing in original quality. No conversion whatsoever. And if I plug into Ethernet, it plays perfectly. So it is just a Wi-Fi thing, and this just started. I was showing these demo clips for the last few days to people, and it was playing fine. And literally, I fired it up, and it just started doing this. So, go into Ethernet. So there are lots of different ways that you can wire a home for network here in my office. Um, I've got one Ethernet drop and two coax. I'm just using one coax. When I renovated the house, I pushed everything back in that I wasn't gonna use and you know cleaned everything up with better looking face plates and all that kind of good stuff. So this is called a Levitron adapter and there are two or three major standards out there for how these types of things clip into the face plates. And this one is compatible, I can't remember what Levitron calls it, quick plug, quick port, or something like that. But it's compatible with Keystone. You'll see the uh, term Keystone used all over the place. And basically it just means there's this tab on the top, and you've just got a clip. So whatever you've got, Ethernet, phone jack, coax, whatever, they just clip into these square holes. And you can buy the face plates with whatever configuration you want. One, two, all the way up to I think 12 fit on one faceplate, and you know you can just buy whatever combination of color you need. So I got one with uh, a coax, a room for a coax, and an Ethernet. Stupid me threw out all the faceplates that I took off when I renovated, thinking I'd never need them again. By far the easier way is when you have a drop that terminates in a normal Ethernet plug. So basically you're running just patch cables all through your walls. This is the more common way when the house is built because they just run the raw cable and then terminate it into these. But if you have patch cables, if you've got the normal plug on the end, you can get face plates with basically a female to female connector. So instead of this, it's just a female to female connector built in and you just plug the patch cable right in. So you don't have to do any of the custom wiring into these. 
there is a special tool that makes these super easy and quick or even just use a tiny little flat blade screwdriver but these can be a little bit of a pain in the butt pinching the wires down in and getting it connected and getting a good connection so patch cables are good if you've got them uh, definitely stick that route but if your house was built with ethernet this is probably what you're going to have and then back here behind the entertainment center i've got a coax and two ethernet drops and what i'm going to do is instead of using both of these i'm just going to use one and i just got a basic switch same one i use in the office and i'll put the switch here in the entertainment cabinet and since i'm running ethernet i'm just going to switch and connect both the Apple TV and NVIDIA Shield, and maybe the receiver. I don't remember if that has Ethernet or not. But, uh, you know, while it's there, may as well use it. I'm only going to be using one device at a time, so it's not like they're going to be sharing any kind of bandwidth. So I'll be using one of these Ethernet here, and I've got two coax there that I don't use either. So those will just stay there in the wall. And then somewhere in your house, you're going to have the networking hub space. So I've got the different alarm systems, and uh, this one was originally put in by Levitron, hence all the cable ends. And obviously there's nothing in here right now except the patch board and all the raw cable runs. So I've got the amplifier, amplifiers and splitters for all the coax, and uh, those are the black and white wires here, and then the blue and yellow wires are all the ethernet, and those go into this, which is called the patch or distribution board. And it also works for phone. There are a bunch of phone lines going into all the rooms too. So what you would do is this is where you would put your router or your dedicated home switch if you're using that. But what I'm going to do is simply find the two leads, find uh, the blue one going to the office there and the correct yellow one going to the entertainment system and just patch those directly together. I don't need this panel for anything. There's just yet another Android glitch. I just had to restart the shield, and now all of a sudden reconnecting to my Plex server brings back everything. Nothing changed. Just glitchy as hell. Woohoo! After yet another Amazon snafu, three days later, got all my stuff in. Got the new wire put in here, connected to the wall inside. I'll tack it up once I verify connectivity. It's a nice flat Cat6 cable going to my switch there. Another wall plate here with cable going in to another switch back in there. And now everything in here is hardwired. So what I'm gonna do is go into the hub and patch this together with my office and we should be good to go. So my patch diagram is questionable. I'm going to assume family room are the two drops right there to the entertainment center. So that's probably taken care of. I'm not sure what the office is. It's a dedicated den. It's not one of the four bedrooms. Um, I don't know what master is. That might be the office, but there's one over here too. I don't know. I'll just have to play with it. So I just pulled in the new switch real quick just to use its connectivity light. I plugged the shield in on one end and it was just detecting the other switch on the other end and just went up and down the ports until got a status light. Turned out to be in the office, this last unmarked one. And over here, the second one labeled FAM. So I took out all the extra patch cables out of the way and that's all I'm using for the home network. <laughs> And success! We have signal, we have data flow, we have everything working. Yay! Finally. So there you go. If you are having problems streaming to your NVIDIA Shield with high bitrate files, and I mean high bitrate, if you're streaming stuff over or from the internet, you're not going to be running into this problem. If you're transcoding, you're not going to be running into this problem. This is for people that are direct playing full UHD rips, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 megabits a second. That's the only thing that's gonna be pushing that kind of data. Forget Wi-Fi, you saw it's not my network. Network is testing way above that. And the Apple TV plays the stuff fine. But if you're using Plex, if you're using Kodi, 
depending on the updates and the versions of everything coming out, you will have problems. So I did this just so I would not run into that again. I don't want to wait for them to patch it and then hope it doesn't break again. This doesn't require anything special. This is a cheap $9 on Amazon unmanaged six port switch. It doesn't have to be anything special because there's only one device using a stream at a time. I'm either streaming to the, sh excuse me, the Shield or the Apple TV. So that's all it took. Problem solved. Hope this helps. See ya.